A delegation from the United Nations Security Council arrived in South Sudan on September 2, 2016. The delegation, being co-led by the United States Ambassador Samantha Power and Senegal's Ambassador Fodesek, arrived in South Sudan following the recent renewal of the United Nations mission in South Sudan's mandate, which underscores the urgency of the mission's tasks related to protection of civilians and the need for stronger cooperation with the transitional government of national unity. Soon after arrival, Ambassador Power spoke to journalists at the airport and expressed the frustration of the international community. The international community is extremely frustrated uh, with the obstruction of UN peacekeeping operations uh, that has gone on for, for too long. It has been extremely difficult for the UN to do its work here, whether that's the work of being out and about and patrolling on the streets in the hopes of protecting civilians who might be vulnerable, or just the work of having humanitarian access so that you can feed people who are in certain parts of this country at grave risk of famine. On Saturday, September 3rd, the delegation visited a protection of civilians site at the United Nations compound in Jebel. Their three-day mission was aimed at assessing the current political climate, meet with officials, and to let people of South Sudan know that the international community is still committed to ending the violence in South Sudan. At the protection of civilian site, they were received by men, women, and children, most of whom sought shelter at the base following crisis in 2013 and the recent fighting in the capital in early July 2016. Council members listen to women speak about what they have had to endure as they risk sexual abuse in search of food and firewood outside the camp in order to feed their children and families. Because it's our chance to see the human consequences of the failure of political leaders uh, to bring peace back to their country. Th these are the consequences. We met with women who described a huge surge in sexual violence against women who leave the camp in order to try to get firewood, in order to be able to cook the food for their families, for their children. As a mother, I can't imagine that choice, a choice in whether I cook for my kids or whether I risk sexual violence outside the camp. I know I would go and, and take that risk for my children. I think any mother would. Um, we heard desperate p appeals for the regional protection force to be deployed quickly. On that Saturday, the delegation had earlier met with the country's Council of Ministers, where they discussed how they could strengthen some bodies that have been set up to conduct investigations following the recent violence. We heard from the members of the Security Council from various countries very useful comments about uh, the implementation of the agreement and the need for us to move expeditiously uh, so that they can see the, us moving, the need for us to create partnership with the UNMIS and, and that the protection force that is being proposed is there to help us rather than to come and invade the Republic of South Sudan. And based on our own actions and how we plan it together with the UNMIS, uh, that force could be uh, helpful to us in improving our security situation and uh, giving uh, more life to the people of the Republic of South Sudan. We also addressed the specific issue of the unfortunate events that took place on the 11th in Terrain Hotel where some uh, criminals and some indisciplined soldiers um, unfortunately uh, intervened, uh, interfered with the freedom of some of our aid workers. That is a, mat a matter of uh, higher priority to the uh, United Nations delegation here and we addressed it. Uh, we, we have a very positive exchange of views on how to conclude uh, 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 the investigations. Um, we touched on child, issues of child soldiers, the issues of POCs and so on. But generally speaking, I want to assure the people of South Sudan that uh, the rumor out there that the UN has come to impose on us and to bring uh, foreign forces to take the freedom of South Sudan is not there. What is being underlined here is partnership between the government of the Republic of South Sudan and the UN as to how to improve security and to prevent conflict in our country.
part of the reason the, the meeting was useful was we got to debunk uh, as a Security Council some of the myths that have existed about what the Security Council has intended. In my case, I got to debunk uh, some of the propaganda about the United States and our intentions with regard to South Sudan. And I think, I hope, that uh, the minister's view, as he's just articulated, shared by every other minister in the room, uh, that there is now an understanding that when we talk about sending 4,000 peacekeepers uh, to South Sudan on top of the force that is here, it is with one constituency in mind, and that is the people of South Sudan. It is with an eye to protecting them. It is with an eye to ensuring that they get the humanitarian assistance they need. Some are facing famine-like conditions, as all of you know. And I think there's been a lot of rhetoric uh, out there about what the regional protection force will and will not do. And we got a chance to talk through, uh, in very pragmatic terms, what some of its functions will be. And I hope that we have bridged some of the divides that have existed up to this point. On September 4th, the delegation held closed-door meetings with President Salva Kiir, after which they announced that the transitional government of national unity had agreed to allow the deployment of a regional protection force as per UN Security Council Resolution 2304, which was passed on August 12th. The announcement on the deployment came late in a joint communique which was read out to the media by Cabinet Affairs Minister Martin Elia Lomoro. To improve the security situation, the transitional government of national unity gave its consent to the deployment as part of UNAMIS of the Regional Protection Force recently authorized by the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2304. So what we need to do now is move from these really important high-level commitments into working out the modalities in an operational way. Uh, and again, the UN Security Council was very clear on what, what is needed and what is sought. And the government was very receptive uh, to sitting down. And we just need to do that in a very urgent way uh, because, of course, uh, as everyone knows, uh, the population is vulnerable in, in different parts of this country. Before their closed-door meeting with President Salva Kiir, Council members were shown around the presidency by President Kiir so that they could view damage caused by the clashes in early July. All the are down here. Earlier that morning, council members traveled to Wau, where they met with displaced people and had a chance to speak to them. But please know that we feel your fear and we hear you are suffering. We know how much you have suffered. It is true that we are not able to go uh, to see your homes, many of which have been destroyed, uh, but we believe you. Uh, you know best about what is happening uh, to your families. Unrest around Wau has resulted in repeated displacement of more than 78,500 people. This includes 39,800 internally displaced people currently sheltering at various locations in Wau town. We have come as the UN Security Council to try to determine how we can strengthen UNMIS, how we can push the government and other parties to implement the peace agreement, and how we can secure accountability for the horrible crimes that have been committed here and around the country. The U.S. permanent representative to the United Nations stressed the need to operationalize the commitments made in the communique. Addressing a news conference later in the night, Ambassador Samantha Power said that there is an urgent need to remove all obstructions to unmiss operations and emphasize the need for cooperation. The challenge now is to ensure that a piece of paper uh, becomes operationalized, that the RPF deploys, that the consultations over modalities, uh, which have been happening already but now need to pick up 
pace and steam, uh, that those uh, bear fruit, that the AU comes and presents its proposals on the hybrid court, and that that gets uh, operationalized given the number of atrocities that are being uh, carried out, uh, that the peace agreement b is implemented, notwithstanding the rocky road it has been on, and that the SRSG and the force commander see and the humanitarians who put their lives at risk to try to support the people of South Sudan see concrete progress when it comes to lifting the obstruction on unmissed movement and lifting the restrictions on humanitarian access. As the council members concluded their trip on early Monday morning, they were hopeful that their weekend visit to South Sudan will bear fruit. We have relationships, I think, with various government actors that we hope to be able to build upon. I think there was a lot of mistrust between the Security Council uh, and the government of uh, national unity, the transitional government. And uh, we have the UN General Assembly coming up where a large South Sudanese delegation is going to be coming to New York. I think we will, I certainly personally will see uh, if we can build upon the conversations we've had here, make sure that there has been follow through for what has been um, committed to uh, last night and hope that we have a new partnership. Uh, we've seen very real challenges, um, both in terms of the um, divisions in the country, um, the huge challenges for IDPs um, and the huge challenges that UNMIS faces. We did, however, also have um, some very honest discussions with the government of South Sudan, um, and the statement that they released last night, which has now been endorsed by the Security Council, um, is a very important statement because it shows a real desire to tackle some of the issues that we raised. Composition, generation and deployment takes time. But as you read again in the communique, by the end of September, things uh, must get uh, moving on. And you see in the resolution creating the force, authorizing the creation of the force, the, the, the force will be deployed until end of December. We have observed that uh, the South Sudan is a rich country, rich in means that, that they have a, a big, big land and fertile and uh, they have a, a quite a uh, big potentiality of development. Uh, but unfortunately, with this political uh, uh, problem, uh, th those uh, development is totally stopped and so suspended. So uh, I, I think that uh, uh, South Sudan would work together with the international community to develop their country. That, that, that is the most important thing to, to, to see. With the departure of the 15 council members, it is also hoped that besides seeing commitment to an end of violence in South Sudan, there will be a return to the full implementation of the August 2015 peace agreement so that South Sudan can begin to recover from years of conflict and alleviate the suffering of the people. Let them believe in themselves. Let them work with the government, let them uh, for, forget about tribal divide. Uh, this country is so rich, so blessed uh, by nature. Uh, it can become one of the giant of the Africa, feeding Africa and exporting and contributing to the country's development. The calling uh, for peace has to be one kind of felt in the hearts of the leadership and uh, there has to be more accountability for injustice or it's going to be hard to get the people to trust that peace is possible. So ha ensuring that the government follows through on its commitments, deepening the relationship, working in a spirit of partnership with the South Sudanese people, um, hopefully will set, set things on its course. The main message is that international community is together with you. But uh, first thing is that uh, you should stop uh, fighting um, among you, that it is now the time to get together uh, for the uh, nation building. Be very clear about what you need from your government. Um, secondly, um, to really um, unify as a country. There are huge tribal and ethnic divisions in this country. Um, and what this country needs, the newest country in the world, is unity. And that is the most important thing.